when the asteroid struck, most of the impact energy was deflected out or up. Only 1% of the force traveled down into the ground. But it's enough to ring the planet like a bell. Seismic waves radiate across and through the Earth. Sixteen minutes and forty seconds later, they reach the Pacific Northwest. The valley shakes as a magnitude 11 earthquake ripples through the ground. Triceratops panic at the edges of the valley in their desperate attempt to escape the tremors and falling debris. Smaller animals take shelter underground. Meanwhile, the ejector cloud approaches at 16,000 kilometers per hour, baking the Earth with unrelenting heat. Millions of volts of static electricity charge the cloud like a giant battery, creating a vast electrical storm. Superheated rocks shower the valley in a burning hail. The Quetzalcoatlus managed to flee the devastation caused by the quake but there's no way to hide from a rain of fire. Only the valley floor can provide shelter, and they're too big to descend quickly. Eventually, the male's tattered wings can no longer keep him aloft. If his mate doesn't find shelter soon, she'll be next. Mountain slopes, two triceratops emerge above the cool sea mist. They're almost out of the quake ravaged valley when the ejector cloud arrives. Just hours ago, North America was a dinosaur paradise. Now, it's a living hell. The ejector cloud continues its spread across the globe, but the effects it has on the ground vary dramatically. Twelve thousand kilometers away in Mongolia, the cloud rolls in silently from the east. Temperatures on the ground creep upwards, a few degrees hotter every second. There's no audible warning for the creatures here, only the mounting heat. As the air reaches 50 degrees Celsius, their only hope is shelter. At 70 degrees, survival is measured in minutes. And at over 90 degrees, in mere seconds. 90 minutes after impact, the temperature on the ground in Mongolia peaks at 150 degrees Celsius. 